All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this, what is this? Razor, it's a model RZ09-0328. All right, it doesn't say the full model here, but RZ09-03287E22. All right, and let's see, is there a full model? No, there's not. <clears throat> All right, anyways, I'm gonna have to look it up online, but we're gonna use a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Most likely it's like a razor blade 15 or something. Anyways, you want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that. In the pattern, I remove them. So we got four here, one on either side, and then another four down here. All right, so let's go ahead and remove all these screws. <clears throat> if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. <clears throat> Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment in on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Uh, but other than that, let's go ahead and continue getting all these screws out. Um, usually the Razer laptops, the bottom covers are pretty easy to get off after you remove all the screws. It usually will just pop off. So let's see if that's the same case with this. Um, <clears throat> but one thing I notice is they try and make them too small and thin and then they get really hot and then that causes problems with the video cards and stuff and basically the motherboard goes bad. Um, anyways, we're going to take all these screws out. Um, it is kind of dusty here so we're going to see maybe if cleaning it up will help with anything but here you can see we can lift this up. Oh, it seems like it's stuck. Maybe there's a thermal pad so yep, lift slowly and you can see two thermal pads for two SSDs and then you got these two thermal pads, one for this chip here and then <clears throat> I'm not sure where else this one's going, but it's on a, like a small chip or something here. Okay, let's see, where's that? Yeah, I don't know what that's going to. I think this, I don't know. I don't know why it would go to that, but okay. Anyways, um, so there's the bottom cover. Uh, we do need to clean this up. It's pretty dusty as you can see. Um, so basically I just use a toothbrush brush all the dust off and then use an air blower to blow it out. Same thing with the fans. It looks like the CPU fan didn't get too stressed, but the GPU fan, you can see there's so much dust in there. All right. <clears throat> there's two M.2 PCIe NVMe SSDs here. I think the customer probably added the Samsung one, uh, but basically one screw, then it pops up slightly and you can pull it out. This battery is already kind of inflating. Very common uh, with gaming laptops because usually people will leave them plugged in all the time. But there's one screw hidden under here, screw here, another one with this like thing that tells you that you opened it. And yeah, and then the connector is one of these where you kind of grab and you got to kind of wiggle to pull it out. Um, if you have a tool that can push here, it would help. Usually I'll use like a small flathead screwdriver or something to pull on this while I'm kind of wiggling and pulling on it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to pull everything out here because I already got this thing working again. But uh, we'll just take a look. You got the LCD LVDS connector here. If you're going to mess with this cable, make sure that you disconnect the battery, open the laptop, and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power so you don't accidentally fry anything. All right. You got the DC jack charge port connector here. All right. And it looks like there's a few screws holding this in, which is also holding the hinge down. So, yep, I think if you remove these screws and remove this plastic piece, you should be able to remove this charge port. It looks like it should be easy to get to. Wireless card is here. Um, there's a thing of black tape around one of the antennas going to the white arrow, and then the black arrow doesn't have that. So I don't know if yours will be the same. Anyways, if you want to remove the antennas, you go from the tail. Usually I just get with my fingernail underneath, and then I just pull straight up. Um, you got the speaker connection for this speaker here. Other speaker connected here. You got the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here, whatever you want to call it, and it's plugged in over here. The thing I don't like about this <coughs> is, as you can see, there's no color wire differentiation here. So if your battery is dead, you're not going to be able to figure out which is the positive and which is the negative. Um, but let me go ahead and see if I can do that for you. So that way, if you have to replace your battery, you can make sure to check the polarity beforehand. Uh, because if you don't and you connect it backwards, you could damage your computer. Or, yeah, you can damage your laptop. All right, so let's go ahead and check which side is positive and negative. OK, 
Okay, so. All right, so we're gonna touch this one here and this one here. And what? What is going? On? I don't want to check that. I want to check the voltage. <coughs> the auto thing's not working well. It's checking like for electric field. So let me see if I can change this to voltage. But it's doing like. Okay, so I think it's this way, because if I switch it around, overload, why is it, this thing doesn't have, like, a way for me to change the millivoltage to voltage, I don't, I don't know, it only has the auto setting, so let's see if I can, there you go, okay, so yes, the positive is, on the left side because if I switch it around it shows negative so you can you see it's less than three volts which usually means it's probably going to need to be replaced soon um, but I don't know I tested it in line without unplugging the battery um, anyways so if you're wondering the positive wire is going out towards this side and then the negative wire is going out towards the um, the CPU GPU heatsink assembly okay um, that way, if you get a new battery, the red wire will be towards this side, and then the black wire will be towards that side, if if it's color-coded. If it's not color-coded, then you're going to probably want to check the thing just in case, because sometimes they like to switch these pins around, and then you can fry your computer with it. Um, anyways, you got this little connector here going into the screen, which is most likely for the camera sensors and other stuff. You got the fan connector right here, really small. All right, um, there's two screws, one hidden under there, and then another screw there. And CPU and GPU are soldered to the motherboard, just in case you're wondering. The RAM is a 16 gig uh, PC4 2933Y. Um, so you should be okay with any PC4 2933Y. Um, most laptops are kind of cross compatible with the speeds, but it does need to be PC4 or DDR4 RAM. Okay, so I don't know if the speed, you can try different speeds if you want, but if you want to be safe, then go with a 2933Y. Um, if I didn't already mention, the battery model, yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't mention, but the battery model is RC30-0328. All right, there you go. And I think that's pretty much all there is in here to look at. So, yeah, I'm going to dust it off, and then I'll be back. You can see there's this little cable going underneath for the indicator light on the front and then you got these two connectors here most likely this is for like the keyboard possibly touchpad assembly and then there's this little one probably for the keyboard backlight um, but yeah I'm gonna clean the dust out and then we're just gonna put this thing back together nice quick video all right I'll see you guys in a bit all right I'm back so as you can see it's all cleaned up all right we dusted this off as well much better all right and now we're just going to put this thing back on. Very nice and simple. Okay. All the T5, Torx 5 screws. Just going to get them all back in. <clears throat> Alright, I'm loosely fitting them first just so they all uh, line up. That way, make sure none of the screws will be out of alignment. And we can go ahead and tighten those down. Again, there's no clips on the bottom of the Razer uh, laptop, so you're basically just getting all the screws back in. You don't have to worry about clicking anything down. All right, and that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. <clears throat> and if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, again, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. If you don't really care about computer repair content, I do have other content on my channel as well. Lots of random stuff. So hopefully you'll enjoy some of my other videos. And yeah, other than that, let's get these last few screws and we're good to go. All right. We'll see if it powers up. <clears throat> I might have to plug it in, but we'll see. All right. So we'll see what 
that's still stuck there. Alright, last screw. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. Let's flip this over and see if it powers on. We should be good to go. It probably, oh yeah, okay. Keyboard's lighting up, and there we go. So it should be good to go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.